In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this table design from scratch. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and all the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up the Figma design so we can actually see what we're going to build. For this project, we're going to build out this table view using only HTML and CSS. So for this table, we have this header area at the top that contains titles for every column. Beneath it, we have different types of columns. So we have this kind of column, which will contain links. Then we'll have several columns of just text, a column for the status, and another one for a dollar amount. Each row has an alternating color, so it will be easier for the user to read. So I'm going to recreate this design with code. So jumping inside of CodePen, right now in my HTML, I just have a head tag with a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to write all of the HTML code, and then we'll apply all of the styling with CSS. So first I'm going to create a table element, and this will hold the entire table design. And then beneath that, I need two higher level containers. I need one area to represent the header of the table and one to represent the body of the table. So here I'm going to write T head for the header area. And then beneath that, I'm going to write T body for the body. So first within that table header, I'm going to create a table row. So I'm going to write TR. And then beneath that, I'm going to include five table headers one for each title for every column. So if we go back to the design, I have an invoice, company, due date, status, and amount. So I'm going to add these values as a table header within the HTML. Next, I'm going to work on the body. So every single table row represents one entry in the table. So I'm going to create a row for each of these values. So underneath that body, I'm going to create a table row. So it's going to be a TR tag. And then for every TR, I'm going to create a TD tag, which represents table data. And then I'm going to multiply that by five because there will be five columns. And so that first table entry will actually be a link. So this will include an A tag. The next two will just be text. This one will be a status indicator and the next one will be a dollar amount. So I'm going to fill out this content. So now we have our very first table row that's visible on the page, but I know I'm going to want to include other kind of styling to this element within the CSS. So for example, the status indicator, I wanted to have a very specific treatment based on its own status. So unpaid, paid, pending, these all will have a different styling. So instead of just writing unpaid here under TD, I'm actually going to include a paragraph tag with two classes. The first class will just say status because I want each status to have particular characteristics that can be shared across each status value. But then for this one in particular, I wanted to have the unpaid treatment because I want it to be read. So I'm going to also add status dash unpaid. So for each status, it's going to include the class of status, which will have its own default styling and also the status of the value. So because this is an unpaid status, I wanted to also have the status unpaid treatment. Then also with the dollar amount, I know I'm going to want to apply a slightly different treatment here. So for this element, I'm going to add the class of amount. So this is the basic structure for each table row. So now I'm just going to duplicate it multiple times and add different kinds of content to vary up the design a little bit. So now we have a few rows of content with different types of statuses. So now we can start applying styling within the CSS. So within the CSS, I like to add a CSS as a preprocessor here, which allows me to declare color variables and also make my CSS really organized. So if this is new to you and you're using CodePen, you can click on this little gear icon and under CSS preprocessor, you can select it right here if you want to follow along exactly. 
or you can just use vanilla CSS. So first I'm just going to paste some color variables that I'm going to use for the project. Here I already declared color variables for each status, so pending, unpaid, or paid. So these are all the colors I'm going to use for the project. And beneath that, I like to add some basic styling to every project. I just like to add a box sizing set to border box and a margin padding set to zero. So I'm just going to add that in. And beneath that, I can actually start styling this project. So first I'm going to reference the body and I'm going to set the font family to the family that I defined in the header of the HTML. I'm going to make the height 100% of the viewport height. And I'm also going to set the display set to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And with that, I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. I'm also going to set a universal color for the font, a particular font size, and the background color. Next, I'm going to work on styling the table. So beneath that, I'm going to reference the table element. And for this, I'm going to set the border collapse to collapse, which will remove any white space between each table entry. I'm also going to add a box shadow to this of zero, five pixels in the Y direction, 10 pixels blur, and a light gray. I'm going to set the background color for the table set to white. I'm going to text align the content to the left, and I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. Next, I'm going to work on the header. So going back to the Figma design, we have a bit of room around the text, and we also have this shadow beneath this header. So here I'm going to write T head, and I'm going to set the box shadow to the same value that we used before. So now we see that shadow underneath this element. Next, I'm going to work on each header. So beneath this, I'm going to write TH, and I'm going to set some padding, top and bottom to one REM, left and right to two REM. I'm going to set the text transform to uppercase. I'm going to increase the letter spacing. I'm going to decrease the font size and increase the font weight. So now this area is looking a lot better. Next, I'm going to work on the content within the table. So beneath this, I'm going to write TD, and I'm just going to increase the padding here to one REM and then two REM. So that definitely adds some breathing room to the project. Next, I'm going to apply styling for the particular elements. Here I have a column that contains links. So if we go back to the HTML, we can see we have that TD that represents that data entry and I have an A tag that represents the invoice number. So I'm going to reference this A tag within the CSS. And for this element, I'm just going to set the text decoration to none, and I'm also going to change the color. Next, I'm going to work on the status. So if we go back inside of the design, we can see that each status is contained within a box. And so each box has one treatment, and then the style of the text has a different treatment depending on its value. So unpaid is red, paid is green, and pending is a yellow color. And for each of these, we added two classes, one of them that will just contain the word status and another one that will contain the value of the content that's inside of it. So going back inside of my CSS, first I'm going to reference that class of status. And for the status, I'm going to set a border radius. I'm going to set a default background color to red, so that way we can actually see some color on the page. I'm going to add some padding, top and bottom to 0.2 REM, left and right to 1 REM, and I'm also going to center align the text. So now we can actually see this starting to take shape. Next, I'm going to work on each status. So like I said, every single status will have a different color value for the background color and also a different text color. So underneath that status, I'm going to write and dash and then the value. So the first one I'll do is pending. So here I'm going to write dash pending. And for the pending color theme, I want it to be a lighter yellow and then more of a brownish color for the text. So I already declared these color variables at the beginning of the project. So here I'm just going to set the background color to the pending color and then the color of the text to the pending font color. So when the table refreshes, now we can see that treatment. So I'm going to do a very similar thing for the paid and the unpaid treatment as well. I'm going to copy and paste this and just modify the values. 
This is where working with variables is actually really helpful because I was able to easily change the colors within my project really quickly because I had a clear naming convention. And so I can always go back to the top of the project and modify the colors if I want to, but it's really easy to pick out which colors I use where. Great, so this is looking really good so far. One small thing for the amount is I prefer if it's aligned towards the right for these numbers. So underneath this, I'm going to reference the class of amount, which we gave for every entry in that column. And I'm going to set the text aligned to right. So now all the numbers are right aligned. Going back to the Figma design, we can also see that every single table row has alternating colors. So I'm going to want to include that in the design as well. So underneath this, I'm going to alternate the color of the rows. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to reference the table row. So I'm going to write TR and then I'm going to use nth child because I want it to change depending on which child it is. So you can use even or odd here to determine whatever background color you want, but I'm going to set it to even. So that means every even table row will get this treatment and I'm going to modify the background color to a different gray. So now instantly we see that the second and the fourth rows have a different color treatment. So there you go. That's how I transformed this Figma table design into HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.